Notion isn't as difficult as you think. If you want to improve your Notion skills, you can build a simple Notion second brain in 10 minutes. All right, so the first thing that we want in our second brain is a task list. So we're going to do forward slash data and we're going to click on table view. So this is going to be our to-do list here and we are just going to click on new table here. So we can call this here task list. Very creative of me. So in here, we are going to start adding all of your different tasks. Now I will add more properties to this as we go, but I'm just going to delete this tags one here. So if you don't have it, you will see me as I go actually add this here. Now we'll come back to the task list, but the next thing we want to add is a calendar. Now, the thing about this calendar is it's going to be the same database as this. So we're actually not creating a new database. We are just going to show this same database in a different format. So we're going to do forward slash calendar and click on calendar view here. Now, instead of clicking on new calendar, we are going to search for the one we just created. And then when I find it, I will click on it. There we go. So this database is the same as this database. So if I add anything here, blah, if I scroll down, you can see here blah shows up. These are the exact same things. They're not connected and talking to each other. It's literally the same database. Now, the last database that we want to create on this page for all of this to work is a projects database. So we're going to do forward slash data and we're going to click on table view here. And this time we are going to click on new table and we will call this projects here. Now this project, you might want to see as a list like this. So you could change this to see it as a gallery. You might want to see it as a board view. Let's just do a gallery as I think that makes most sense. Then we can choose if we want to see these here. So right now these are cards. So the card preview here is saying page content. So if I add anything in here, I'm going to see a little display here of what's inside. But what we can do here is say none. This just means that I'm not seeing what's actually inside of these project pages here. And then we can change the card size here from medium to small. So we have projects, we have a task list, and we have a calendar. These are, in my opinion, the big three things that you need for a second brain. So what I'm going to do here is click on blah. Now, if you don't have a task in here, you can also do it in here. It really doesn't matter because again, these two are the same database. So if you do anything here, if we add a property here, it will also add it to the task list. So I'm going to add a property here. And this property here is going to be a relation. Now a relation is just fancy talk for which database do you want this to talk to? So I want this to be the projects database that we just created. So I'll press on that. And now here we can say, do we want a limit on it? Now we actually don't want to show it on projects, even though that seems like that's what we want. Instead, I'm going to show you a much better way of doing it. So I'll click on add relation. So now we have projects. So if I click here, as you can see, all of the projects are showing up. Now they are all called untitled. So what I'll do here just to make it simple whilst we're working is project one, project two, project three. Hey, depending on when you're seeing this, the link in the description is either to my wait list for the Notion course that I'm making or the course is live right now. The link is in the description if you want to improve your Notion skills. So if I go up here, and click on projects, you can see we have project one, two, and three. So I'll click on project one. Now when I'm working here, I want to be able to know what is this task related to? So if I click on the three dots here and then click on properties, I can now say which properties do I want to show? So I could say I want to be showing here before I even click on the task, I want to be able to see the projects. Now I can see the project here. And if I do example here and it doesn't have a project related to it, it will show up like this with a blank space underneath. Or if I obviously click it in and say project two, I'm now going to see project two here. Now we are missing one major thing from this calendar slash task list here. And that is a checkbox. So we are going to click on blah here. So we'll click on add property and we will scroll down and we can see checkbox here. Bear in mind, you can also just search for checkbox and it comes up right there. So I'll click on checkbox and now we have a checkbox. Now, the annoying thing is if I click this in and then let's say that I want to see this in here by clicking on the properties and saying, show me checkbox, you can see it says the word checkbox. So I'm going to see the word checkbox 50 times. This is really annoying. So instead, I'm just going to click here, do rename, and I'm just going to do a space bar here. I don't want to see anything here. That means it's going to show up blank here. It's just easier for the eye. So now we have the task, we have the project it's relating to, and we have, is it done or not? This is now a very good calendar system. And we have our task list here. Now the problem with this task list here is A, this is a bit of a mess here in terms of the order. So I'm just going to reshuffle them like this. I think this makes more sense to me. Now we want to ensure that we're not seeing tasks that we've already done here. So I'm going to rename this table here. I'll call it uncompleted. And if you want to change this little icon here, we can do rename again and we can actually change it here. So let's do a circle for that. That is uncompleted tasks. 
And now what we want to do to ensure that we're only seeing these tasks here that don't have the checkbox ticked in is click on the filter here. And then we are going to do filter by this checkbox here. And we're going to say only show me stuff that is unchecked. And now you can see that that has been removed. Now, in case we ever want to go back and see the completed tasks, what we can do here is now right click on uncompleted and do duplicate. Now this we will call complete. And I think it makes sense that this icon is a check mark. Now, as you can see, we're not seeing the completed tasks here. That's because we've duplicated this tab here. So when I duplicate a tab, I actually also duplicate the filter. So here now we have to change the complete filter from unchecked to checked. So now I have here all the stuff that's uncompleted. And here I have all the stuff that I've completed in the past. Now, the last thing to make this second brain work, obviously this is a reasonably simple second brain, but it's still very powerful for this to be fully utilized and really helpful. We're going to create a template for these projects to load in only the relevant tasks that we want to see. So only the tasks that relate to this project. So we'll click on the down arrow here and we will click on new template. Now, as you can see, it says you're editing a new template. So I'm going to do full screen here and I will call this new project here. Now, what we are going to do is forward slash data and click on table view. Now, again, we do not want to create a new table here. We want to show our existing task list. Now, as you can see, it comes up in my recents here. I can see task list. So I'll click on that. And now here we can select a tab that we've created. Now I'm actually just going to click on cross here because I don't want the filters that are involved in these. So I'll click on cross here. And what I'm going to do here is add a filter and say, show me only the projects that contain, and we are going to say new project. We don't want to say project one, two or three or any other project because then we have to manually change it each time. The awesome thing about Notion databases here is if we say new project, this will actually automatically change every time we create a new project. Really, really useful. I'm also going to make this full width like that. Now I'll do two more things here. It says table, so I'm going to rename this and I'll call this tasks. And then I'll change this and just do a circle. This will be all different tasks that are completed and not completed. And what I'm going to do here is add a group. So grouping in Notion lets me split up a database and see it in two groups. So I want to group this by the complete. And I also want to say, do not hide empty groups. So now what's going to happen is I'm going to see in here the ones that are checked in and the ones that are not checked in. So now if I click on project one here and click on new project, it will automatically load in. Here we can see all the tasks that are checked in and all the tasks that are not checked in. And it's only the stuff that's relating to project one. And if we add anything new, either in here or in here, it will automatically get added into project one if it's got that relation here. So I'll add a uncomplete task here. The task is thing and the project here is project one. And as you can see, it is unchecked. So if I open this up, now we can see under the unchecked, we have thing. So if I'm going to work on project one, instead of going to my task list, what I can do here is just click on project one and only see the stuff that is to do with project one and broken up by what have I done and what have I not done. Now, the last thing that we're going to need for projects is a way of sorting these out because what we're going to have here is all of the different projects that we've done in the past, which is going to become way too busy. So we'll click on project one here. And by default with a new database, we should have the tags property here. But if you don't see that, I am going to delete this and add it just so you can see. We'll click on add property, scroll down and click on select. For example, there's a bunch of different ways we could do this, but we'll call it select. And let's just call this stage. Now we're going to add in a few different stages. So we have complete. If it's being worked on, it doesn't need a label. Let's do archived and let's do one called priority as well. All right, so we'll do project one as priority. We'll do project two as complete and we'll do project three as archived. And then you know what? We'll add another one just so we can see how this works with project four without a stage associated with it. Now, what we're going to do here is rename gallery. So I'll call this active here and we can change this icon. Let's just do an arrow. So what we are going to do now is click on the three dots again. And let's say that we want to see the property now of stage. So here I can see priority, complete, archived, and this one doesn't have anything associated with it. So active in this one, we're going to want the filter with the stage not being so stage is not either complete or archived. So I'll click on archived and complete. The reason we're not doing stage is because we can't select the ones like this that don't have any stage associated with it. Now we're just going to right click and do duplicate. And we can call this done or something like that. 
I might just do a bin for this one. And again, because we've duplicated this tab, we still have the filter here of stages not archived and complete. So now we're just going to change this to stage is archived and complete. So we're seeing these here. The last thing that we're going to want, so we are always seeing the priority first, is to add a sorting. Now a sorting will let us say which do we want to show up first in a list. So we'll say sort by stage and have stage ascending. Now we're going to see everything that is priority first. If you're looking for a second brain that's a bit more in depth, that has notes, resources, time tracking, life buckets, dynamic journaling, and much more, then check out my premium second brain template. If you click on this video here, you'll get a full tour of the template. It's got over 1,200 users and a five-star rating. If you found this Notion build helpful, you will absolutely love it. Thank you so much for watching.